Hi there, this is Terry from Stamping Magic. Welcome back to my channel. Today's project is this gorgeous gift box. I've used the woven threads designer series paper to decorate it as well as the Magnolia Blooms and the Good Morning Magnolia stamp set. Now this box measures 6 inches by 4 inches and is 3 inches tall. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the lid of the box and this measures 8 and 1 16th of an inch by 6 and 1 16th of an inch. And you want to score this at one inch on all four sides. Now I like to score using the Simply Scored board and I work in inches usually when I do this so the scoring measurements will only be in inches. For the base of the box you need a piece of card, this is in Pretty Peacock by the way, that measures 12 inches by 10 inches. Now obviously this needs to be cut from a 12 by 12 piece of card and not everybody has those. So in a minute I'm going to show you an alternative way to make the base of the box. But using a 12 inch by 10 inch piece is by far the quickest and easiest way to do this. Now you want to score this on all sides at 3 inches. If you haven't got any 12 inch by 12 inch cardstock to cut your base from, you can cut it from standard size cardstock. You need two pieces measuring 10 and a half inches by 7 inches. Now you want to place this into your scoreboard with the long side across the top and score down at 4 inches and 10 inches. Then rotate your cardstock and score down at 4 inches. And you want to repeat this for the second piece. So score first of all at 4 inches, then 10 inches. Turn your cardstock and score at 4 inches. I'm just using retired cardstock here just to demonstrate. There's just a little cutting to do on the lid. You want to cut up the score line and then notch each side of the corner tabs. So again you're doing a straight cut first of all and then notching either side of each of those corner tabs. If you started with a 12 inch by 10 inch piece of card for the base then you're going to prepare it in a similar way as you've just done for the lid. So you're going to do a straight cut up the score line and then slant cut either side of that corner tab. The only difference here is that after I've done one corner tab I rotate the card stock so my tabs are all pointing in different directions. Now you don't have to do this, this is just something I tend to do when I'm working with a larger piece of card. So again straight cut following that score line and then you're going to notch each side of that large corner tab. Once you've prepared both the lid and the base, you can go ahead and fold on all your score lines and burnish the folds with your bone folder. If you used the alternate method for creating the base and you cut your card from two pieces of standard cardstock, then this is what they look like. You've got two sections going across. The bottom one is wider and this is the base of your box. We're going to remove that thin corner section and then we're going to slant cut the sides of that tab above it. And then I'm just going to separate the two sections along the base by cutting up that score line. 
So first of all, we're removing that corner section and I'm going to notch each side of that remaining tab above it. And then I'm going to cut up just a straight cut at that score line and I'm actually removing the score line. You're going to repeat this for the second piece of card. I'd forgotten that we don't actually need all of that um, smaller tab so you need to cut it in half just approximately in half and then notch either end of it and do this on both pieces. Then fold on all the score lines and burnish the folds with your bone folder. Now because I'm not actually going to use this space I'm going to show you how to put it together now. If I was going to use it then I would decorate it before um, putting it together. So all you have to do is add glue to that small side tab and then place the other section on top of it. Then you can apply glue to the second small tab and close the other section on top of it and it all should line up if you've scored it correctly. Then you can do the base of the box. Now because we've got a seam on either side it doesn't matter which side you use as your front and your back. You just want to fold one of those large tabs down and that will cover the whole of your base from the inside. We're going to sandwich the smaller tabs in between the two larger ones so you won't see them. So your box will look very neat from inside and outside. So apply glue to each of the remaining three tabs, fold the sides in and then fold what will be the front of your box because that will have the nice edge on it with no seam. Then just run through um, the inside of the box with your bone folder just to make sure everything's stuck firmly and your base is done. So on to the decoration next. I'm going to do the top panel first of all and I have a piece of Whisper White cardstock that is just big enough for me to be able to die cut it with one of our stitched nested labels dies. This is one size down from the largest. Okay, so as long as your cardstock is as big as it needs to be for that, then it will be fine. I'm going to stamp it with one of the Magnolia Bloom stamps, this little Magnolia bird. And this is a photopolymer stamp set and you'll find it in our beginner's brochure and it coordinates with our Good Morning Magnolia set. I'm going to watercolour these images and I'm going to stamp them using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. Now you may have understood that you use Memento only when you're using your alcohol markers but this isn't actually true. You can watercolour with it as well. And because I'm using a photopolymer stamp, I don't like to use stays on ink and stays on remover. That doesn't do your photopolymer stamps any good. So I like to use Memento. And all I'm going to do is randomly stamp this image all over this piece. Now most of this mat you won't actually see once it's been die cut because it's going to be covered with a large flower and some leaves. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time carefully watercolouring all the images. I'm just going to do it very uh, roughly if you like. I'm going to use Pear Bizarre's ink for the leaves and Rococo Rose for the actual flowers. Now I'm pressing the ink pads from the base this pulls the ink on the lid and I can use that as a palette. I'm going to watercolour using one of my aqua painters and this has the water in the barrel. So you just squeeze it lightly. Because I'm using a normal weight Whisper White card, I don't want too much water. I want the pen to remain fairly dry. I want it wet enough to glide smoothly over the card. I don't want it to drag 
but you don't want too much water because the cardstock will start to peel. So I'm starting with my Rococo Rose first of all and I'm just uh, doing a light wash of colour just over most of the petal on each of the flowers. I'm leaving the top part white. Now I've done my first layer, I've squeezed the ink pad again to get some fresh ink and I've picked up some of the more concentrated ink so it's going to be darker when I apply it and I'm just adding a little of this towards the base of each of the petals again just very roughly I'm not being that careful when I'm watercoloring this to clean the brush you just squeeze it to get some water flowing and just work it quickly on some kitchen paper until it runs clear and then I can start coloring the leaves and I'm repeating the process really that I did for the petals. So I'm lightly colouring with green, first of all. And then I'll let that dry just for a couple of seconds before squeezing my ink pad again to get some fresh ink and using this more concentrated towards the base of each of the leaves. After watercolouring, I can die cut this with the stitch nested label die, one size down from the largest. And then I'm going to use the largest on a piece of Rococo Rose to create a mat to go underneath. I'm going to go through all the measurements you need for all the decorative panels, but you will be able to find these on the corresponding blog post on my blog. And you'll find a link to this in the description below. Now I'm using some of the Woven Threads designer series paper and Rococo Rose cardstock and this is to decorate the base of the box. Now the card measures 14.9 centimetres by 7.2 centimetres which is 5 and 7 eighths of an inch by 2 and 13 sixteenths of an inch. The paper measures 14.5 centimetres by 6.7 centimetres, which is 5 and 3 quarter inches by 2 and 5 eighths of an inch. Now the smaller pieces of card measure 9.8 centimetres by 7.2 centimetres, which is 3 and 7 eighths of an inch by 2 and 13 sixteenths of an inch. And the last pieces of paper measure 9.4 centimetres by 6.7 centimetres, which is 3 and 3 quarter inches by 2 and 5 eighths of an inch. And you need to cut two of each of these and layer them together. So now for the top of the box, we've got some more woven threads designer series paper and Rococo Rose cardstock. Now the paper measures 14.5 centimetres by 9.4 centimetres, which is 5 and 3 quarter inches by 3 and 3 quarter inches. The cardstock measures 14.9 centimetres by 9.8 centimetres, which is 5 and 7 eighths of an inch by 3 and 7 eighths of an inch. Now for the side pieces and you want to cut two of each of these. The first cardstock measures 14.9 centimetres by 2.1 centimetre and this is 5 and 7 eighths of an inch by 13 sixteenths of an inch. And then the paper is 14.5 centimetres by 1.7 centimetres which is 5 and 3 quarter inches by 11 sixteenths of an inch. The shorter pieces of card measure 9.8 centimetres by 2.1 centimetres, which is 3 and 7 eighths of an inch by 13 sixteenths of an inch. 
and the designer series paper measures 9.4 centimeters by 1.7 centimeters which is three and three quarter inches by 11 sixteenths of an inch. You want to layer all the designer series paper onto the respective Rococo rose mats and then position them onto the base as shown and also the lid as shown. Once all the decorative panels have been added then I can start putting the box together. I always like to decorate when the box is flat if I can but it's not always possible. Anyway for the base you just add glue to each of the corner sections in turn and then position them onto the adjoining side section. And I'm just smoothing over with my bone folder as I go to make sure they're well stuck down. And it's the same process for the lid. Add glue to each corner tab in turn and then position it. And when you do this, make sure that the corners remain nice and square. You don't want them slanting inwards or outwards because this will affect the fit of the lid. and then you can add your lid to the base of the box. So this is the first one I completed. And you can see it's a nice snug fit, but not too tight. And then my decorated one, which I'll actually use. I've already created the flower for the top of the box and I have a video where I show you how I did this. I'll put a link to it at the top of the screen. It's actually going to be top right, not top left, but hey ho. And in this video, it shows you how to make several different flowers. I want to stamp and cut out two leaves and I'm using the leaves from the Good Morning Magnolia stamp set. I'm going to stamp them onto a scrap of Whisper White and again I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink even though I'm going to watercolour this. As before I'll use Pear Pizazz Ink and my Aqua Painter and I'm just going to do a light wash of colour all over the leaf to start off with. Then I'll squeeze my ink pad again and pick up some of the more concentrated colour to just place on some of the darker areas. Now I've stamped and coloured and cut out two leaves. And because I used normal weight Whisper White and watercolored them, they do tend to curl slightly, which I quite like for the leaves. So I'm just going to um, make it curl just a little bit more by using my bone folder and shaping it. Then I can add glue to them and I'm just going to add the glue near the stalk of the leaf. I don't want to stick them down flat. I want them to curl up around the flower. Thank you. 
I've already added dimensionals onto the back of my flower so I can now remove the backs and then position it over the leaves and I do have to take this out of camera shot just for a second to make sure I get it centered properly. I've gone ahead and added dimensionals to this panel so I can remove the backs and then I can position it on top of the lid of my box. And that's it, the box is now completely finished. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Bye for now.